On an ordinary Wednesday morning in May of 2019, Amanda Eller decided to go for a short hike. She was working and living on the Hawaiian island of Maui, which is a place with no shortage of outdoor recreation opportunities. Why not get out into nature a bit, clear her head, and do some meditation? What could possibly go wrong? Well, everything went wrong. What was supposed to be a hike so short that Eller didn't even bring her cell phone would soon spiral into an incredibly tense, mysterious, and dangerous situation. Within just a few days, her story would be plastered all over the national news, police would be searching her boyfriend's house for evidence, and searchers on foot and in the air would be scouring through the dense Maui wilderness. Day one turned into day two, Day two turned into day 10, and day 10 turned into day 17. And just when everyone was starting to run out of hope, a discovery was made that would change everything. Amanda Eller was alive, albeit barely, but as soon as she began telling her story to the public, a whole new mystery began to take shape. Did she really get lost or was it all a hoax? Did she take any mind altering substances that day? And was she really telling the truth or was there an alternative agenda, perhaps one that might benefit her financially at play? This is the controversial survival story of Amanda Eller. This is a bizarre one, folks. It's a story that seems straightforward on the surface, but gets stranger and stranger the further down you dig. But regardless of that, there is still a lot we can learn from this story, trust me. And it's actually for that reason that I'd like to thank Drink Element for making this video possible in the first place. So let's say you're out on the trail one day, or maybe you're not even hiking, maybe you're just riding your bike around your neighborhood or doing some yard work, working on your car. Let's just say you're out doing something that is making you sweat. If that's the case, you can't just drink water in order to stay hydrated, which might sound crazy to you, but I'm telling you, you need to also replace the electrolytes that you sweat out. And if you're going to do that, you might as well do it with the best electrolyte drink mix in the game, Drink Element. Guys, if you don't replace your electrolytes, you're going to feel fatigued. You're going to cramp up. It's really just not going to be good. You're going to feel so much better with Drink Element, and you're especially going to feel better because, well, their drink mixes taste amazing. This flavor is citrus salt. It's one of my favorites. It's tied for number one with grapefruit salt, another banger. And one thing that I really love about Element besides the amazing taste is that it's not full of sugar and other BS like you find in so many other electrolyte drink mixes. A thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium is all that you need. Drink Element has everything that you need, nothing that you don't, and it packages it all together with an amazing taste. And I really do mean amazing, by the way. They have so many crazy awesome flavors. I don't even have time to tell you about all of them. And so what you should do is go to drinkelement.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking. That's drinklmnt.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking. Or click the link in the description. And when you shop through that link, you're going to have a sample pack of eight of their flavors thrown in with your order for no extra cost. It's a great way to try all the amazing flavors they have and really just get a feel for what Element is all about. One more time, drinklmnt.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking. Thank you so much to Drink Element for sponsoring this video. And with that said, let's get into the story of Amanda Eller. In 2019, 35-year-old Amanda Eller was a resident of the Hawaiian island of Maui, where she worked as a physical therapist and a yoga instructor. By all accounts, she was truly living the dream. She was working jobs she loved, she was living with a supportive boyfriend in literal paradise. I visited Maui for the first time recently, and so trust me, I'm not making that up. Maui is absolutely incredible. And speaking of Maui, one of the perks of living there is that you have access to insane amounts of outdoor recreation from the obvious ones like surfing and the beach stuff all the way to hiking and backpacking. Hell, there's even a beautiful national park there, Haleakala National Park, among multiple other state parks and forest reserves. Amanda Eller took 
full advantage of the hiking opportunities at her disposal and she was known to frequently go on runs in the forest where she would also stop and take time to meditate while she took in the scenery. She was also known to leave behind her cell phone when she went on these short adventures. At roughly 10.30 a.m. on May 8, 2019, Amanda drove to the Makawao Forest Reserve and parked her white Toyota RAV4 at the trailhead. She then headed into the woods, intending to do a short hike slash jog. She hiked in the forest here quite often, and so she felt comfortable, perhaps, a little too comfortable. Now, like I said a second ago, Amanda commonly left her cell phone and other items like her wallet in the car when she went on these adventures. I'm not exactly sure what her reasoning was for this, but I did find one quote from her saying, I love to stay away from EMF, which means electromagnetic fields and cell phones. Now, I never found any other direct quotes from her about this, but the general consensus seems to be that she simply liked to unplug and disconnect from technology when she was hiking, which is very reasonable. I totally get it. Although, in hindsight, say, I'm sure that she wishes that she would have brought that cell phone. Amanda Eller was planning on hiking three miles and didn't intend on being out for more than just a couple hours. At one point during her hike, she decided to take a break and she quote, laid down on a tree, whatever that means. After this break, she started to backtrack towards her car or that was her intention at least. Unbeknownst to her, she was in the process of making a big, potentially deadly mistake. Eller soon realized that she was not following a hiking trail, but had instead accidentally started to follow animal paths, which were leading her deeper and deeper into the wilderness. When asked about this critical point in her hike, she said, quote, all I can say is that I got out of my car. It's like I have a strong sense of internal guidance whatever you want to call that, a voice, spirit, everyone has a different name for it, heart. My heart was telling me, walk down this path, go left, great, go right. It was so strong. I'm like, great, this is so strong that obviously when I turn around and go back to my car, it's gonna be just as strong, but it wasn't. Not only had Eller left her cell phone behind, but she also wasn't carrying any map of the area or an emergency satellite device. Hell, she wasn't even carrying any food or water, and now she was completely lost all by herself. Around 7 p.m. that evening, park officials were getting ready to close down for the night. Part of their duties was to lock the gates at the park's entrance, and in the process of doing this, they noticed that a white Toyota RAV4 was still parked at the trailhead. They didn't notice anyone in or around the car, and so they just continued to lock up. And at the same time that this was happening, Amanda Eller's boyfriend was beginning to worry because, well, she hadn't come home to the residence that they shared yet. He was quoted saying, she likes to do her own thing and I respect that. It did, however, start to get later with no sign of her and I started having that weird feeling, you know, that gut feeling that something wasn't right. His gut feeling was correct. Something definitely was not right. And after unsuccessfully calling Amanda a few times, he decided to just go to bed. I mean, at that point, what are you supposed to do? Something feels off, but at the same time, it's not uncommon for her to not come home. And so he went to bed and he just hoped that Amanda would arrive at some point during the night. But morning came and Amanda still wasn't there. And so it was at this point that he reported her missing and officials quickly got to work trying to figure out what the hell had happened. As is often the case when someone goes missing, their partner is the first person that police take a close look at. And just because Amanda's boyfriend had been the one to report her missing did not mean that he was gonna be let off the hook. Police asked Amanda's boyfriend if they could search the couple's residence and they also asked him to take a polygraph test. He complied with both of these requests. Nothing suspicious was found at the home and he also passed the lie detector test. 
and therefore Amanda's boyfriend was cleared as a suspect in her disappearance and he then turned his attention to doing all that he could to help bring her home safely. In one of the first pieces of evidence in the case, security footage was quickly obtained that showed Amanda Eller stopping into a store as well as a post office to mail out a Mother's Day gift. The footage showed her leaving the post office at 10.21 a.m. in her white Toyota RAV4 SUV. That same SUV was located early on the first day of the search. It's at this point that searchers noticed her cell phone, wallet, water, and and backpack were all left in the car, indicating that she either wasn't planning on being out for long or maybe was taken from the scene against her will. However, it didn't take long before officials learned about her habit of leaving her phone behind while she was out on hikes. So all of this is going on and everyone was very confused about what had happened, but nobody was as confused as much as Amanda herself. After getting lost that first day, Amanda Eller wandered around in the Maui forest until midnight. She hoped that she would get lucky and somehow stumble back to her car, but this didn't happen. She started day two with the same naive optimism, but by day three, she became less concerned with finding her car and much more concerned with just simply surviving. She needed food, she needed water, and she needed shelter. Some nights Amanda slept in the grass and some nights she slept on rocks. She apparently even spent at least one night in a boar's den. She ate various plants that she found in the forest, many of which she didn't even know anything about. On occasion, she even resorted to eating moths that landed on her body. With each passing day, Amanda Eller became more and more desperate. On multiple occasions, she noticed helicopters flying overhead and she did her best to get their attention. She arranged rocks into an SOS formation and she also put her bright clothing out on display, hoping that the helicopters would see it. And yet, despite these efforts, the helicopters didn't see her. She was still all on her own. And just when she thought her situation couldn't possibly get any worse, Amanda fell 20 feet off of a cliff. This caused a fracture in her leg and a torn meniscus in her knee. And so now, even just simple movements through the forest were incredibly difficult. Amanda would drink from random water sources until she discovered a reliable stream about one week into her ordeal. After this, she continued to stay on the move, but she stayed near the banks of this stream. At one point, she was caught in a flash flood, which caused her to lose her shoes, and yet, despite this, she still stuck to the stream. She was just following her intuition, and even though this intuition had nearly gotten her killed in the flash flood, only time would tell if it was ultimately going to save her. The search for Amanda Eller was massive. For whatever reason, the news about her disappearance absolutely just blew up online, and it was soon being covered by major news networks broadcasting all around the country. Online donations came pouring in as well, totaling more than $70,000. Volunteers scoured over the terrain in Makawao Forest Reserve, searching caves, backcountry streams, and pretty much any other place they thought that Amanda could have potentially been. They even killed aggressive wild boars to check their intestines for human remains. An average of 100 volunteers were out searching for Amanda every single day that she was missing. Officials always believed that she had most likely gotten lost in the forest, but as the search dragged on, there definitely was some chatter about the potential that Amanda had run into foul play. Sarah Haynes, a spokesperson for Eller's family, was quoted saying, generally speaking, it's highly likely that she's lost or injured in this forest, and it's also equally as likely that she was intercepted by someone in the parking lot or on her run. And as the days go by and more and more people are in the forest, we get closer and closer to foul play. But at the end of the day, the only thing that they could really do was continue to search. And while hundreds of volunteers were doing that on the ground, other tools besides just human feet 
were being used as well. Scent dogs, drones, even psychics were brought in to try and assist in the search for Amanda. And of course, one of the most indispensable search tools was being used as well, that would be helicopters. Most of the search efforts had been concentrated in a mile and a half to two mile radius around the trailhead Amanda Eller had left from. And this makes total sense. The forest in this area is very thick. I've actually seen it described as a jungle a few times. And so it was unlikely that Amanda had been able to travel outside of this search perimeter. On day 17 of the search, a helicopter being funded by the online donations I mentioned earlier decided to search a bit further out than anyone else had because why the hell not? The helicopter crew flew some seven miles away from the search radius, but they still didn't see anything. Their fuel levels then dictated that they better turn around. And so they did. And on the way back, they made a discovery that would soon be plastered all over the news headlines throughout the country. The searchers in the helicopter had by some miracle spotted Amanda Eller. 17 days later. Her terrifying ordeal was finally about to be over. We all did a double take. Where we found her is an extremely treacherous area, said Javier Cantalops, one of the men in the helicopter. There were also three other men in the helicopter, Chris Burquist, Troy Helmer, and pilot Pete Vorhez. I think I got all those names right, but I do apologize if I messed any of them up. When these men rescued Amanda, they were absolutely just thrilled. I mean, look at some of the photos taken right when Amanda was found. Now, this is a very serious situation, so I'm, I'm definitely not trying to make a joke out of this, but you gotta admit, it is kind of funny just how excited they all look. Burquist described finding Amanda as, quote, the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. Cantalop said it was one of the highlights of his life. They were just completely stoked and honestly, good for them. They, without a doubt, saved Amanda Eller's life. And so even though these photos are a little silly given the serious circumstances, I don't know, I think they earned every right to take them. Amanda was flown to the hospital and after staying for a few days, she was released and thankfully has made a full recovery. And therefore, it might sound like this is the end of the story, but unfortunately, it's not. It would turn out that the circumstances of Amanda Eller's disappearance and later rescue would prove to be very controversial, particularly in discussions online. Now, I obviously wasn't there. I don't know what the truth is, and the last thing I want to do here is encourage people to hate on Amanda Eller. I think she already went through enough. With that said, I do think that it's okay to discuss some of the unanswered questions and mistakes made in this case in a respectful manner. And I ask that you conduct yourself in the comments section also in a respectful manner. So the low hanging fruit here is I'm just gonna say it, folks. It's a terrible idea to go hiking without your cell phone, without an emergency beacon or a map of the area that you're hiking in. Do not do that. And I know that's pretty obvious for most of you, but clearly it happens sometimes. And honestly, I've encountered tons of people doing this over the thousands of miles that I've hiked. I'll come across someone asking for directions because they're deep in the wilderness and they have no idea what trail they're on and no idea how to get back to their car. Again, I'm not saying this to try to be a jerk to Amanda. I, I just think it's an important lesson to be highlighted. And honestly, I'm very sure that Amanda will not make this mistake again. So now that that's out of the way, let's move on. Again, I'm not an expert on this case, but it does seem to me that much of the controversy that emerged after Amanda was found started maybe because of some of the comments that she made in the media. Now, this is just my opinion. And again, I'm not trying to be a jerk here, but I don't really think that Amanda did herself any favors when she was interviewed and referred to her near fatal ordeal as a quote, spiritual boot camp. It's like, you almost died and you know you put other people at risk potentially the people that were out there searching for her and so i think this quote just really rubbed a lot of people the wrong way as did some of her other comments that i actually read earlier in the video remember the ones about her 
strong sense of internal guidance, which she then blamed for getting herself lost in the first place. So yeah, these quotes definitely didn't do her any favors, but this wasn't the only reason that her case became so controversial after she was rescued. For whatever reason, people began to question pretty much everything relating to Amanda's story. Some people were wondering if maybe she had taken some mind-altering substances the morning that she went missing. In response to these accusations, she said, quote, I definitely didn't have any drugs or alcohol or anything like that. Anybody that knows me and knows my spiritual journey in the last few years knows that I get high off of life and off of people and heart. And so I don't know. Everybody can have their theories there. I don't care. And going along with the questions about potential substances that were used, other questions were raised as well, such as how does somebody fall asleep on a log in the woods? Or how come in 17 days of wandering through the forest, how didn't she cross any roads or any other trails that entire time. Some people were even wondering if she could have been hiding out at the house of one of the rescuers for those 17 days with the goal of pocketing all of the donations that were made to her GoFundMe. Now, I'm not so sure about that last one, to be honest, but I will admit that some of these questions are intriguing to say the least, but at the end of the day, I'm going to refer to the judgment of the men who actually rescued Amanda Eller. Those men have actually come out and publicly denounced any of these questions and the people that are questioning Amanda's story. Javier Cantalops was quoted saying, If you have your own little theories on why she got lost, if you want to think she's an idiot, that's one thing. But disrespecting the memory of this, disrespecting what happened, is disrespecting every single volunteer with that search and rescue team. Team. And this is just my opinion, but I think he has a great point. Regardless of some of the weirdness in this case, the search and rescue efforts were amazing, effective, and even heroic. And as for Amanda, again, I wasn't there, but I think it's pretty obvious that she made some bad choices the day that she went missing. And then also made some bad choices in the way that she spoke to the media. I think it's good to ask questions about public cases like this, especially when things don't really seem to add up, but I also don't think that it's okay to blame or use hateful language, and so I really ask that you be respectful to Amanda in the comments section. I'm very, very glad that she survived, and I wish her well. I encourage all of you to do the same. If you watched this far into the video, I ask that you hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I especially ask this if you're a repeat viewer. Over 80% of my viewers are not subscribed and my pipe dream is to one day get this channel to 1 million subscribers. And obviously we have a long ways to go and so any help would be much, much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.